next month, look to the sky as a solar eclipse will be visible across the country. You'll be able to see the moon slowly move in front of the sun, blocking some of its light in a partial eclipse. In some states, seeing the moon completely cover the sun in a total solar eclipse. And you won't want to miss it because this is the last time the U.S. will see a total solar eclipse, and that is until the year 20. 44. So joining us now to preview the big event is the Deputy Director of Heliophysics at NASA, Dr. Gina DiBraccio. Good to talk to you this morning. Hi, good morning, Mary. I mean, these are the events that you wait for, right? Exactly. We're so excited for this one. All right. Give us a, a clear understanding of exactly what's going to be happening during this event. Yeah. So during the total solar eclipse, we have the moon moving between the Earth and the sun. So if you're located along the path of totality, what you're going to see is the moon completely block out the sun. And that means you'll be left with views of kind of the what we call the corona, the upper atmosphere of the sun. If you're not within that path of totality and you're within the, the 48 contiguous U.S. states, you'll still experience a partial eclipse, which means that you won't see the moon fully blocking the sun, but you'll get to experience part of that. And back in October, we had that annual annular solar eclipse on April 8th. We're going to have the total solar eclipse. What exactly is the difference between the two of those? Yeah, so, so for the annular eclipse, we do have the moon kind of coming in front of the sun, but the moon was a little bit farther from the Earth, so when you look up at the sky, you're left with a ring of fire. Now this time, the sun will completely be blocked so that we won't see that ring of fire. And a total solar eclipse is the only time we see the actual outer atmosphere of the sun with our own eyes. What will scientists be looking for during the eclipse? That's right. So we have a bunch of different experiments that we're doing at NASA in order to study the corona. And we're really interested in this so that we can understand how particles are, are accelerated from the sun, how the atmosphere is being heated. We actually have some pretty neat experiments flying on NASA's WB-57 research jet that are going to be imaging that outer atmosphere of the sun during the eclipse so that we can understand how it operates. Those will be remarkable images for sure. So it is it isn't safe to look directly at the solar eclipse, but how can people maybe safely enjoy that show? Yeah, great question. So what I have right here are our solar eclipse viewing glasses. If you have a pair of these, this is the best way to see the eclipse. Now, they have a special filter made so that you can look at the sun while you're wearing them, and the only thing you'll be able to see is the sun. If you don't have those available, you can create a pinhole projector or you can use some household items. So people like to use colanders that have a lot of holes in them where you can let the sunlight filter through. You can even use your hands and kind of just cross them together and make your own filter to look at the sun uh, coming through onto the ground. And when should people expect to see the eclipse happening on April 8th? I mean, what time should we be looking at the sky? Yeah, so for your specific location, wherever you are and wherever you will be for the eclipse, you can go to go.nasa.gov slash eclipse2024, and that will actually allow you to find our interactive map to see what time. Um, you know, it's different for the locations, it's different for the time zones, but for most areas, it's around kind of like one or two o'clock in the afternoon. So you'll need to check out your specific time. Deputy Director of Heliophysics at NASA, Dr. Gina DiBraccio. Thanks so much for taking some time to talk to us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you.